...through the longest period in modern economic history of the Bank of England, raising rates one meeting after another for 14 meetings. We have been coming here to try and find out what they've been doing. They've been facing this cost of living crisis, seeing inflation going very high indeed, up to double digits levels. Uh, they've raised interest rates from 0.1%, so the lowest they've been in history, all the way uh, up to where they are now, 5.25%. And for the first time since late 2021, they've paused. So they have paused and they have left interest rates unchanged. It is still about as fine a margin as you could have hoped for in this meeting. It is 5-4. So the Monetary Policy Committee, the people who decide on this, there's nine members on that committee. It was a 5-4 decision, decision. Five people voting uh, in favour of keeping rates unchanged. Uh, five, uh, four people voting to try and raise interest rates. Just to give you a sense of how close it was and to give you another sense of how close things were, just yesterday, Today, the markets thought there was an 80% chance of increasing uh, interest rates today, that the Bank of England would increase interest rates to 5.5%. Um, obviously, we then had that inflation data, that fateful inflation data that came in a lot lower than expected yesterday. The bank has looked at that. It's looked at the rest of the data facing the UK economy at the well uh, at the moment, and it said, well, right now, we can leave things unchanged. Does this mean, does this pretend uh, that interest rates are now at their peak? We don't really know, but, you know, you'd, you'd have to guess there's a good chance of that. Uh, does it mean that interest rates now, having reached that peak, are going to start coming down? Well, the bank is indicating they may well be there for quite some time to come. Uh, but nonetheless, it is certainly one of those moments. We've been stood outside here so many times over the course of the last couple of years and had the same story to tell. The bank is worried about inflation. Uh, it has raised interest rates in order to try to bear down on our spending in the economy. And that, of course, has had an impact on so many people, millions of people around the country, seeing their mortgage costs going up, businesses seeing their cost of doing business going up as well. Um, as well as that, you have an impact on savings. So savings rates for the first time in a long time have also gone up. Well, that process of raising the cost of borrowing across the UK now may now have come to its peak. Uh, and so it's one of those interesting moments. But still, all eyes on this place because the cost of living crisis, that's not gone away. Inflation still at 6.7 percent, way above their target of 2 percent. Uh, and whether they need to do more, whether they need to pause for quite some time uh, with interest rates still at this really high historical standard when you're looking at recent years, when you're looking at the debt burdens facing people, well, that remains to be seen. But certainly a big moment here at the bank. Certainly is, Ed. And, and uh, in the past few minutes, the Chancellor of the Exchequer, Jeremy Hunt, has responded to this. Let me just read out um, what he had to say and then get your thoughts on his words. He says, we're starting to see the tide turn against high inflation, but we continue to do what we can to help households struggling with mortgage payments. Now is the time to see the job through. We're on track to half inflation this year and sticking to our plan is the only way to bring interest and mortgage rates down. I mean, kind of echoing, Ed, what uh, the Chancellor said yesterday, that the plan is working when we saw uh, that uh, slight drop in the, in the rate of inflation. Um, and also they're hinting, of course, that he's going to continue to try and help people who will have seen their mortgage payments going up as a result of this current level of interest rates. I think the thing, the thing to remember, and it's, it's slightly borne out by, by there's a kind of subtext in what the Chancellor is saying, is that you know, just because interest rates didn't go up again this time around, it doesn't mean that interest rate pain isn't hurting many families, millions of families around the country. Just the nature of the way, you know, if you have a mortgage, you will know the way that we all refix our mortgages these days in mostly two and five year cycles. I mean, it's a gradual process for a lot of people. They have yet to see that pain in their pockets. But when that pain actually starts to manifest, it is a very big jump for those households who have mortgages at the moment. And by the same token, the cost of living crisis is still with us. Inflation, the rate at which prices may be going up, that is certainly coming down. However, those prices are still rising. They're just not as, as accelerating at quite such a rate as they were before. So, you know, one has to be a little bit cautious about kind of saying that we're kind of at the end of the tunnel, but definitely what we've seen in the last couple of days is some light at the end of the tunnel. And now when we're kind of looking towards the next few months and indeed the next few years, it doesn't look quite as much of a grim picture as it did before. And frankly, we've had so much grim economic news recently. The bank has had so many questions about why it's not been able to bring inflation under control. Is it quite under control yet? 
I don't think they'd be so sure about that. And I was just in, you know, at a briefing. We're looking through the data, looking through the minutes. And we'll hear from the Bank of England governor later on this afternoon, as well as the Chancellor uh, you mentioned just a moment ago. So there is still a lot of kind of question marks about what happens next. But as I say, it does feel like one of those moments today.